Howdy, folks. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining me in the uh, in the brewery. Uh, I'm going to have just a bit of a chat today on a subject which is becoming more and more relevant um, for all home brewers, uh, and it's something you're seeing all the time. Uh, and that's pressure fermenting. And basically, what I'm looking at today uh, is Addressing the question you see a lot, and people, you know, I said home brewers are coming up with it all the time now, should I be pressure fermenting? Um, <laughs> in, one, in one word, yes. Um, but no, just a bit of a quick chat um, about why I believe that you should be pressure fermenting um, and have a, just a quick look uh, and a couple of ways that you can get into pressure fermenting and implement it into your brewing. Before we get into it, big shout out to Little John's Patreon. Guys, thank you very much for your support. If you're interested in Patreon, there's a link down the bottom. A couple of dollars a month gets you into the, uh, the exclusive inner world of Little John's Brewing. There's, there's member benefits, there's uh, extra recipes, there's extra videos, and there's prizes every month. Um, and there's a warm, tingly feeling inside knowing you're helping out. <laughs> but anyway, it, Patreon's not your thing, that's fine. Hit the subscribe button, become a subscriber. If you subscribe, well done. <laughs> and if you're going through and you like what's going on, give the video a thumbs up. But anyway, uh, get on with this chat. No beer today, still recovering post-op, so I'm still, I'm still alcohol free for another uh, 36 hours. But anyway, uh, so, so pressure fermenting. Until yeah, the last couple of years, pretty much been a no-go area for, for a home brewer. Just really wasn't yeah, a workable option. Uh, and that's becoming less and less um, true as manufacturers are bringing out more equipment that fits into a home brew environment uh, and into a home brew budget. Now a few years ago you're, you're talking, you were looking at stainless steel options and they were big dollars. Uh, you're looking at yeah, $800, $900 was sort of entry level three years ago for any sort of real pressure fermenting. Uh, and you're talking stainless steel conicals uh, which involved elaborate gadgetry, dump valves and yeah, required pumps and all sorts of things. Um, and to a degree it was just like dragging a piece of shrunken commercial equipment into your brewery. Uh, and it just was well beyond the reach of you know, the, the vast majority of home brewers. Over the last few years that design has been modified and brought down into a more economical option. Starting off with things like the, the traditional Fermentosaurus uh, and that sort of design with a plastic conical uh, which then had a collection jar on the bottom. And there were several options, like I said there was a Fermentosaurus which came from Keg Land. Um, there were several options available through Keg King. Uh, there was options coming from out of the States. So, uh, many of you have been on the channel for a while will remember, uh, for a while I had a, I had a fast ferment here. Uh, and I did until only recently, it was not that long ago actually I actually got rid of my fast ferment. Uh, but those vessels all relied on having a collection jar on the bottom which allowed the yeast to be collected and taken away. Um, because that was the big focus of the conical fermenter. It was removing yeast uh, and finding a way of dry hopping without having to open the fermenter. Uh, so they weren't cheap. They were still a, a, a reasonably pricey item. They were getting more on a, on a home brew level. I had a fermenter, and I've still, I've still got my fermentosaurus here. Uh, but what the problem was there, and same, I had the same issue, and plenty of brewers have had this, the ongoing issues with them. They were a damn sight pain in the ass to use. Um, they would, they would stick. The mechanisms would all but get welded <laughs> onto the fermenter bodies, and you couldn't get them off. Um, collection jars were exploding under pressure. Um, shit was going everywhere. Uh, they were just a nightmare. Uh, they were a well-intended design, 
um, they just didn't fit the brief. They sort of did, but they were just far too fiddly and difficult to make them worth worthwhile. Since then, as everything does, it evolves and there's, yeah, something comes out and it doesn't work particularly well. Uh, how can we fix that problem? The designers go back and they look at things more. Uh, and that's got us to now where we're running with the modern run of PET pressure rated fermenters. And there are several really good options available um, at the moment. And they're all a good price range. So, you know, I've, I've got that look, Keg King and um, Keg Land, who are probably the two biggest, obviously the two biggest suppliers in Australia for, you know, fermenters and whatnot. Their models, uh, Keg Land is the 30 litre, uh, the Firmzilla All Rounder, uh, and Keg King has the 30 litre Apollo Snub Nose. Now, I'm going to pop us a couple of pictures as we go. I'll pop links down the bottom. Both of these units are going to set you back about $100. Um, I think one's a hundred, one's a hundred, one's a hundred and three, something like that, pre-postage. Um, but that gets you a pressure fermenter with the, with, with, with the bits and bobs included. Um, at the moment, they're currently running with PR, um, with spunding valves, um, and both units have a filtered uh, float tube for getting getting beer out. Um, the only real difference at the moment is that the Keg, Keg King has a firmer well included uh, with the Apollo, um, which for me sort of gives them a little bit of a, an edge um, because that's just that little bit extra that you don't need to pay for, um, including your, in your base price, and it's really nice actually have that firmer well. As much as sticking your uh, your probe for the absolute fermentic does get a fairly good control on your on your um, water temperature. It is nice actually having it dead smack in the middle of the water, um, just to be sure. Um, so definitely an affordable option. Okay, so you, yeah, considerably more dollars than your standard 30 litre you know, PET fermenter, but. The advantages and the reasons why you should be pressure fermenting is, are the same reasons why you should be paying an extra, you know, sixty dollars for a fermenter setup. Uh, pressure fermenting allows you to brew your beer with minimal chance of oxidation. Um, now, same minimal could depending on exactly what you're doing in your process, there is still chances that you can get oxygen into your beer. Uh, but running a pressure fermenter with care and correctly uh, during your process are uh, giving you a very, very, very good chance of keeping oxygen out of your brew. Um, and when you compare it to what a standard fermenter is going to give you, that's just that's chalk and cheese. Uh, so no oxygen is, is, is a big plus, and especially you know, with more beers becoming you know, higher hopped, more hopping is going on. There's more things happening within the fermenter, <laughs> within the beers we're brewing, um, that increase your chances of bringing oxygen in. There's far more people brewing big IPAs, Nipahs, Hazies. So the chance of getting oxygen into that beer late in the process are getting more and more. Having your pressure fermenter really takes that away. Being able to get to the end of your ferment, drop, drop a dry hop in on day four, five, six or seven, and being able to put your fermenter back together and then purge any oxygen out of that fermenter immediately um, is brilliant. Now there are bits and bits and pieces that can be attached to 
different pressure fermenters to even reduce that chance even less with getting that oxygen in. Things like hot bongs and stuff like that. But they significantly increase the cost. Uh, and for me, I think it's, it's a big cost increase with no massive extra protection. Um, there's a lot of mucking around the cost involved in reducing that oxygen when the reality is putting your, putting, putting your hops in gently on day six, sealing up your fermenter and purging, the ox purging any oxygen out of it and filling that tank with CO2 um, is, you know, you're 99.8% of the way to oxygen free. Um, Without any, without any real hassle. So, yeah. The other advantages, obviously, are earlier through the ferment, where you're getting into a more standard sort of a beer into lagers and simple pale ales and things, where there maybe isn't big dry hopping and, and things like that. Where you're giving yourself the ability to ferment uh, a little warmer by introducing a little bit of pressure to suppress the yeast esters. Um, so it allows you the opportunity to ferment lagers a little bit warmer, um, ferment your ales a little bit warmer, which means you can ferment them a little bit quicker. Um, which is a different subject, and I'm not going to really go into it right now. And there's videos on that. Uh, but The main thing is, even with that simple beer, is being able to build pressure from, 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 from day dot, allow your beer to use any oxygen that's available to the yeast during the lag phase, and then allowing the CO2 production to push any remaining oxygen out of the fermenter during the fermentation process. So by the time you come to cold crushing and or kegging slash bottling, there's nothing in that fermenter but CO2 and it's sealed. So when you're cold crashing you're not worrying about suck back or bringing any any oxygen into the into the fermenter, into the bin. Uh, and then when you transfer into the keg you're doing it completely sealed. Or if you're bottling um, you can do that with minimal oxygen issues as well. Now that does require a secondary piece of equipment, some sort of bottling gun uh, to get from that pressure fermenter into your bottles. Um, it is a little bit of an extra step on top of the standard just dropping a bottle wand on the bottom of your tap of your PET fermenter and just going through the bottles. But on top of that you have the event your bottling Carbonated beer, uh, and with a little bit of practice, you soon work out what levels you need to have your CO2 at to get there. Uh, so you're not priming bottles, you're not waiting for them to carbonate, you're not waiting for secondary fermentation to happen. From the day that beer goes from the fermenter into your bottle, it's starting to condition. Uh, technically, it's ready to drink straight away. Yeah, if you don't if you don't want to wait, if you don't mind you be a little bit green. And again the pressure ferment can reduce that time a little bit uh, by using again, using that pressure during the ferment to suppress esters uh, and byproducts produced by the yeast. Um, bearing in mind that increasing pressure on the fermenter on its own Will, ex can, will and can extend, well, not always, but can extend your ferment time by several days uh, because the yeast will not be as active, which is why it doesn't produce your flavours. So you can lose a little bit up front, but you can gain it on the uh, reduced conditioning time and not having to wait two to three, four weeks for your beers to actually carbonate. Yeah. So that is positives. There, there's pluses there. Um, as I said, there is an added cost if you need the gun to go to to bottle, 
uh, but again not a mass not a massive cost and for me it is worth it uh, it's probably a little takes you a little bit longer to bottle but again the positives are outweighing the negatives the, the result at the end is a better beer uh, and that's yeah that's what we're after and everything we're doing getting better beer into your glass in your belly <laughs> so uh, that's it but you'd see you need to be aware of these these couple of things if you are going there if, like I said if you're kegging already then the transition is yeah it's nothing uh, it's only a case of a, dropping a hose or two over another advantage with the pressure ferment comes in with the kegging in that you can run your outward CO2 from the fermenter into your keg while you're fermenting and use that CO2 to purge the keg that you're going to put your beer into in the end simply by putting your spunding valve on the keg uh, and just having an outlet with a hose with a, with a disconnect on either end running from your fermenter to your keg <laughs> then you end up with your keg with full of CO2 and I was just reading just before as I was looking for the actual listings for the fermenters um, so an average 23 litre batch will produce two to 300 litres of CO2 and now the keg's 19 litres <laughs> you got plenty 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 of gas in that keg so that means two things one you're not using gas from your bottle to purge your keg so it's saving you a little bit of gas uh, actually three things you don't need to drag your bottle around the brewery uh, to purge kegs um, you can just sit a keg in the ferment fridge um, Mine just can sit up in the back in the corner of the ferment fridge. It just sits on sort of on top of the fermenter, and you can run get, run run gas in there and there you done. The third thing, um, and this is, I haven't done a lot of, I haven't played this, and I, and I want to, and I've been planning to, and I, I do want to get to it. Uh, and that is aroma protection, hop protection. When you're doing these big dry hops. If you're running gas out straight through the funding valve, you're bleeding off some aroma. I believe there's an opportunity that if you're running to a keg that you can maintain, keep some of that aroma in that keg. My thinking is then that when you cold crash, you're going to pull initially some of that aroma that's CO2 from the keg back into the fermenter keeping that aroma in in the beer now I said this has not been fully tested that's only a theory I have running around um, in the sense one, one or two want to play with but main thing is you have this ready purge keg so when you're ready to transfer let's just pull the hoses or swap over <laughs> from beer to beer, to beer yeah <laughs> run, run, run it in a loop and basically just let it let it run uh, and it does its thing or you can just simple transfer pull a PRV uh, and she'll just cycle through the end result of all this whichever way you go should be prepared to be um, massively better <laughs> that's arguable um, but it should be better so all the processes along the way are adding little bits to your beer you know a better a better fermenting environment for your yeast makes your yeast happy produces less esters and off flavors means better beer no 
oxygen getting into your beard, better beard. Safer transfers, better beard. Removing the need to add sugar for a secondary fermentation, better beard. Reducing conditioning time, doesn't necessarily make better beer, um, but get you, get, you, get you into your better beer quicker, which is better. So, the reality is, pressure fermenting ticks a hell of a lot of boxes which do good things for your beer. There's no real negatives, aside from having to spend a little bit extra money. Uh, and let's face it, we, we're home brewing. We're saving so much fucking money home brewing. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's what we tell everyone. We tell everybody everyone we, we're home brewing to save some money. Use some of that money you saved to buy some better gear. If you can find that money you saved. Yeah, I know. But anyway, guys. <laughs> Pressure fermenting, it's a, it's a thumbs up for me. Uh, I said, there's plenty of, plenty of equipment out there to do it with. I'm not gonna push a particular bit of equipment over others. I've used, as I said, I've used kegland gear, I've used, and still, and use the, uh, the all-rounder. Uh, I've currently got it, I'm looking at one right now, sitting here, got a ferment going on in an all-rounder. I've got a Keg King 20 litre junior sitting in the fridge. Um, they're only a 20 litre, they're a bit smaller, so if you do smaller batches, they're good, they're a little bit cheaper. Um, but they don't work at much cheaper if you buy well, Tommy out all the bits and pieces to them because they don't come with, uh, with a full setup. But they will pressure ferment for about $25 cheaper than yeah, a, a full size fermenter. Um, the Keg King. Apollo 30 litre um, snub nose. I use it, I love it. They, they're great. Um, the snub, the, the Apollo and the all rounder both have a bigger opening, uh, which means you can get your arm into them clean. The Apollo does have a slightly bigger opening than the, um, than the all rounder, uh, which for some people will be an advantage. I can get my I can actually get my arm into the bottom of uh, the Apollo, which I can't do on the all rounder, even though it's a shorter firm, an actual short, shorter body, um, just due to the fact I can't get beyond about there <laughs> on my arm. <laughs> um, so if you've got yeah you know, little skinny arms, or you've got yeah you, know, you can talk your missus or with the kids into clean, scrubbing your fermenter out, then it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, the reality is most of my cleaning I do with a uh, cobweb broom anyway. Get that in there and I'll give a scrub with that. So I don't really need to get my arm in there too much. But they, they all work well. And so there's several other options floating around if you look, but they're your, they're, they're your, main, they're your main three. Uh, and as I said, I've used them all and they've all worked well for me. So guys, Get in, the pressure, get in the pressure fermenting. There's no reason not to. There's Australia-made options if that's how you want to go. You don't need to go with Chinese-made if you don't want to. And I know that's an issue for some people. Um, so uh, make your own choice on that. Um, I know where I prefer <laughs> to spend my money, uh, but you make your choice on where you want to spend yours. So guys, thank you uh, for joining me. Um, if you've got any questions, any comments, stick them down the bottom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some links up to a few videos around bottling and different different bits and pieces I've, that I've talked about a little bit. Um, so you can have a bit of a look at them if you haven't seen them before. I'll put some links down the bottom to um, a couple of the different fermenters and the, and the setups. As I said, uh, Keg King and Keg Land at the moment are both doing their 30 litre pressure fermenters 
uh, as a full kit with a spunding valve included, um, which is really good. So you have to have to go and buy one of them separately. Uh, and I said there's links down there to the Patreon, Facebook group, all that kind of stuff. So guys, thanks thanks for watching. Um, so until I see you again on the next video, when we uh, we won't be brewing beer, that's not going to happen for a couple of weeks. <laughs> We might be drinking beer, we might be talking beer. Till then, good brewing.